Hey everyone, welcome to part two of Let's Play Fire Emblem of Sacred Stones. Picking up right where we left off. This is Grado's for forces uh, approaching yet another castle in the area. This is Princess Tana of one of our neighboring friend nations. She is the Princess of Fralia, which is where, as you may recall, uh, Erica and Seth are on their way to to get help and reinforcements. And she is looking for us as well. Indeed I do. It's nice to have such a good friend. Look at that, even she's trying to get more troops to help us. That's cool. Commander Breggett here, he's a douche, but yeah. Ah, that's what you think. Oh! Well, he, he thinks he's a badass. Oh, congratulations. You just one-shotted Random Soldier 16B. Good job. Well, look at that. He thinks he's quite the badass. Oh, that sounds threatening. Don't tell the truth. Don't tell the truth. Oh, yeah. What? Why would you tell him that? Yeah, because princesses don't make really good host hostages or anything, right? It's true. She's a daddy's girl. Oh, look at that. You'll make us a fine hostage. What did I just say, Tana? That's what you get for talking. And here we are, arriving on the scene. Erica is, of course, a very upstanding and upright person, so of course she sees trouble and, well, asks to do what she can. Pretty interesting considering it's just her and Seth. It's not like she has an army behind her. <laughs> I'm sure they're worse than kidnapped, but we'll go with that. Well, that's what happens in war. Oh, we'll see plenty more of that, believe me, Erica. Alright, we need to retake Mulan Castle. Alright. Now, as I was alluding to last time, Seth is an upgraded unit, so he really doesn't need XP right now. Since he's already promoted, he's well above any other enemy he's going to be facing. We can visit random houses. Sometimes we'll get items or helpful bits of information. This time being that staying in a castle slot will heal you every turn. Eh, no, not there. Gonna move Erica up. 
If you can get into one of those little forest spaces, it greatly increases your evasion percentage while not directly affecting your attack at all. So it's a very good... Forest spaces are very good if you want to defend. Let enemies come to you. Yeah, it's not going to happen. As you can see, Eric has taken quite a bit of damage, but... We're not really worried about that at the moment. Because no one else can reach her. And she has vulnerabilities on her person to heal herself. Hey, there's Franz. It looks like he found one person to help us. Okay. Oh, look at that. They're looking for Tana, too. The castle guard? You mean Random Soldier 16B? Yeah, he's toast. Yeah, they took her hostage. Hope. Never give up hope, Franz. It's true. Now, normally when guest characters join, you usually have to interact with them with either a certain character or any of your characters to get them to join you. But in this case... Franz and Gilliam start on our side. So, what I'm just going to do real quick, see how much trouble Eric is in real quick. You can always click on an enemy to see his movement range in blue and the attack range in red. So if you move Erica here, she is, has no fear of reprisal. And since I have a sword, whereas the soldier has the axe, I'll have the advantage. And Erica will level up for the first time. Now, different classes have... Okay, that was a pretty solid level. Different classes... When you level up, your stats don't go up a fixed amount. Each different class has a certain chance of gaining an increase. So, for example, a fighter might have an 80% chance to increase hit points at a level, a 60% chance for uh, constitution, skill, and defense, and like a 40% chance for all the other stats. So, leveling up can be either, I mean, it is pretty random. You can end up with really overpowered characters, or sometimes you'll have to use items to make up for gimpy characters later on. We'll make our first attack with Gilliam here. Knights have really, really low speed, so you'll pretty much never get a second attack with them, but their armor is amazing. You can always just take a look at unit stats here using the R button. Now, as you can see, his defense is 9, and just as an example, let's use Erica. And her defense is 3. So as you can see, defense is the name of the game for knights. They have a decent strength, so even though they usually only hit once, the attack is usually pretty decent. The only thing with knights is they have a pretty low movement range, and they have fairly poor evasion rates because of their heavy armor, but it usually doesn't matter because they take so little damage. Now here we have Franz, he's our first cavalry unit, and he can use swords or lances. So as you can see, I'm using, uh, going to use a sword against a spear unit, I would do 11 points of damage, and I get to attack twice. Let's see what a lance would do. 14 points of damage, and I get to attack twice. Go back to the sword real quick. Now the enemy has an 81% chance to hit us back at 6 damage. Or, with this, he's got a 66% chance to hit us at 5 damage. This is all part of the weapon wheel, because swords are beaten by spears and lances, but going off a lance on equal footing, it goes purely off of stats. So we'll let France get in here. Yeah, it's, it's easiest to think of this game as a really, really complex version of rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, you thought I was going to die, didn't you? Ah, that's the nice thing about um, Erica. She has pretty good evasion. Yeah, it would have been pretty sad if he had hit me, because I would have just game over. Uh, what's his life at? One? Yeah. We want to gain as many levels with Erica here as we can. As you can see, her hit percentage, she's going to hit him, so I have no fear of a miss and dying to a counterattack. Unlike a lot of games, death is permanent here, so if I lose Erica, it's game over. 
if I lose one of the characters that aren't essential to the story, they'll either die, or if they do have some story significance, they are basically crippled for the rest of the game. Yeah, I'm talking about some of the weaknesses in armor. Um, heavily armored units, there are weapons called armor slayers that basically work better the heavier your opponent's armor is. We're going to let this turn pass here so I can let Erica move up and heal herself. Vulnerities restore 10 hit points. Well, like I was saying, it's best to think of this game as like rock, paper, scissors when it comes to combat. I'm actually going to move Gilliam here so he can heal next turn. Basically, as I was saying, swords beat axes, axes beat lances, lances beat swords. But it's a little more complex than that, even though I just showed, for example, Franz, the difference is, well, since this guy has an axe, I'll show you again. Since axes beat lances, Franz has a 68% chance to hit him for 11 damage, and the soldier has a chance, 80% chance to hit us for 9 damage. But swords beat axes, so let's look at the stats now. I have a 100% chance to hit him for 11 damage, and he has only a 50% chance to hit me for 7. Now, since Franz's speed isn't that much higher than the soldier's, I don't get a second attack. And beyond just the rock, paper, scissors format of the weapon triangle, um, basically how weapons work in this game is swords are the most accurate weapon, but they're the least powerful. Axes are the most powerful, but the least accurate. See, Seth just rolls over everything and gets no XP for it, so hold him back unless you absolutely need him. Uh, swords are the most accurate, least powerful. Axes are the most powerful and the least accurate. And lances are in the middle for both. They're kind of the all-around weapon. Now we want to be a little careful here. Move ahead just a bit, because we're going to have uh, enemy reinforcements from the southeast in just a second. And we want to be able to farm them for uh, experience. Uh, magic in this game has a pretty similar uh, setup as weapons, but no point in going over them right now because we don't have any magic users. For these first few maps, basically do what you can so that Erica gets the finishing hit. We want, since she's the main character of this game, we uh, want to get her leveled up as much as we can, because she'll be a very important unit throughout the whole game. We'll just end here to let those guys approach us. very important in this game not to overextend yourself since death is permanent. If you get into a situation where it looks like you're not going to be able to take on a big group of guys then like set a, it's a good idea to set up like a defensive formation so like instead of attacking the enemy head on let them come to you basically just set up your best guys and then just pass the turn the enemy will attack, you'll counterattack, and then on your turn just keep healing yourself. That way you can eventually wear the enemy down with minimal risk to yourself. It's usually not too necessary unless you just get into a really bad situation. Now that's, a, that's, a, that's another nice level. Uh, resistance was the stat there you saw I'm getting a second point in. That determines your magic defense. Not going to come into play for a while, so... Um, it's not uncommon to have characters with low magic resistance anyway since physical characters usually have low resistance, but we don't got to worry about it at all for a while. Now that was not a very nice level. Hollow, that's nice. Weapon level increased. Weapon level determines which weapons we can use and how effective we are with them. Basically luck, it's one of those things that affect a little bit of everything. Um, mainly uh, crits. So let me go over that real quick right now, since I didn't in the last video. 
Strength is obviously your physical attack, determines how much damage you do. Skill determines your chance to hit. Speed determines um, not only how likely you are to get a second attack against an opponent, but also factors into how likely they are to get a second, uh, second attack against you. Luck mostly affects critical rating, but it has slight effects on other things as well. Defense, obviously, determines how much damage you take from physical attacks. Resistance, how much damage you take from magical attacks. And your movement range is how many squares you can move. And your constitution affects partially, um... What does constitution affect? I think that has an effect on, um... I'll have to double check that and get back to you, actually. I think it has an effect on defense and hit points, but I don't remember exactly what the correlation is. Strange as it sounds, some of the significance of the stats change in various versions of the Fire Emblem games. Okay, let's see what Brigette here can do. Just like our characters, we can check him out with the R button, see what's going on. We can see if he's got any special items. He's just got an Iron Lance. So you can see he's got huge defense and a good attack. So, let's uh, fight fire with fire, I guess. Not going to do a whole lot of damage against him, but that's fine. Now, the important thing here, I am going to play a little defensive, because since Brigitte is on a what's technically a castle square, he'll regain a little bit of hit points every turn. So we're going to set ourselves up for a little bit of a defensive round here, and just um, let the turn pass. Night on night battles are pretty boring. We will. Ah, I shouldn't have left Gilliam there. Oh well. It's alright. How is the. The rapier is very good against armor. Now you can see her sword is flashing. That means she's got a bonus against whoever she's fighting. In this case, her critical hit rate goes up. She gains extra attack ability. And her hit percentage is affected as well. But since her attack round will kill him, we want to get at least a little bit of experience for the other characters in. So let's let Franz get in in there. See, he gained a little bit of HP back. We'll let Franz get a little bit of XP. Oh, very little since he missed. Oh, his speed is dramatically higher than Brigitte's, but he missed twice. got a ton of vulneraries. Let's see, uh, let's try that again. It's important in these first, well, not super important, but in these first couple battles, you want to maximize your experience gains. It's just going to make your life incredibly easy later on. See how we're not doing a whole lot of damage? It's because we're not, we don't have a, a weapon bonus against him. So our, our damage is pretty terrible since at this level, Franz just doesn't have the attack power to get through him. Now, he's going to hit Erica pretty hard, but he has no chance to crit her, and that's the only thing I'm worried about. Uh-oh. So, Erica looks like she's in trouble, right? Uh, I'm screwed, right? Nothing I can do. She's already taken her turn. Brigitte's just gonna kill her. I can't. I can't. I can't attack him, but I can rescue her. The units that are considerably larger than other units can rescue them. Mounted units can rescue pretty much everyone. So we just pick Erica up, move her out of harm's way, and we can get Gilliam in here to attack back. And unless Gilliam misses, this will be the... Oh, okay. I shouldn't have spoken. That's what I get. That's alright, because that'll let me... Give me a chance to get Erica back in here. Now what you can do... First get Gilliam back out of the way. Just head on over here. Drop. Drop Erica off. Now the strange thing is, she doesn't get a turn back. So keep that in mind. 
But the good thing about this boss is that he doesn't move from the target area. So we'll just heal Erica up. End the turn. Forget we'll get some hit points back. He's still he's still slated for 13 damage. Hmm. You just know I'm gonna miss just to make me look terrible, so I might as well show something else off. We can trade items between characters. Just select the character, hit trade. We don't want anything back from her, so just like that, we're all done. And I am taking these battles a little slower than I normally would, just so I can show off a couple of these features. Because some of them I'm not going to use too often, so I want to show off what I can while I'm thinking about it. Oh, and she gets a huge crit anyway. Alright, what are we going to get here? Hit points and luck, not bad. Generally, as long as I get a hit point raise in the level, I'm happy. And we seize the throne to finish the map. And we reunite with Tana. Apparently she wasn't quite kidnapped yet. Yeah, it's me. It sure is. Yeah, me too. I'm glad I'm safe. Ephraim, no idea where he is. Yay, Castle Fralia! Get our first look at the world map screen here. And it's full splendor. Yay! This, of course, is her father, King Hayden. This is the guy we've been looking for, heading out to Freelia to get reinforcements. It would do my heart good if you would give me an army. Thank you. Oh yeah? Is he alright? What? Ah, huh, what a bummer. Our dad didn't survive. Oh, I tell you, I'm pretty exhausted, but I gotta tell you, I can't stay. Gotta find my brother. Oh, that's pretty good. Him and just a small force got into Grado, right in the heart of the Empire. That's that's pretty impressive. Our brother must be a badass. Good. Pegasus Knights deserve to die. I hate Pegasus Knights. Anyway, well, seeing he's my brother, I mean, I'm sure he's got to be fine. I mean, if he's half the badass I am. Nah, it's not suicide. I hate that. 
Stay here, rest some more, and leave this war to the warriors. Yeah, that's us. Thanks. Oh, that's not true. Renee's has an army. It's me, Seth, some kid on a horse, and a fat guy in armor. What's up? Oh, that's where you're wrong, sir. I like how Erica just doesn't take shit. She's like, King's like, hey, you should say. She's like, nope, I'm leaving. But you know, you're you're not a. War yep, I'm good enough. Yep, I'm going. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Vanessa. Now Mulder. Mulder is great. He's a priest. He's our first healer. He is a badass. So is Gilliam. I love Gilliam. Vanessa, I hate Vanessa, because she's a Pegasus Knight. Uh, basically, once I have the option to take anyone out of the party, F Vanessa's the first one to go. Although, sadly, part of my job of, you know, providing information for this LP will be to point out Pegasus Knight's strengths and weaknesses and uh, all that jazz when the time comes. Oh, they will. And that is important. He's given us the convoy. He's going to give us some money. Basically, at points on the map, we'll be able to buy and sell our weapons. Um, and you've probably noticed my weapons have numbers next to them. When I go into combat, it'll show a number next to the weapon when I select it. That's basically its durability. Once that weapon hits zero, the weapon breaks and becomes useless. So having a fresh stock of weapons is pretty important. This game is all about weapons, magic, stuff like that. You don't buy new armor. That's basically all handled through stats. There are several items in the game that increase your various stats by two. Um, those, will ha those are helpful for picking up a dragging comrade, you know, someone that's just not leveling up right. Or it can make a mediocre character into a powerhouse if you do it right. Obviously, Emperor Vergara is not a man of peace. He just invaded my kingdom and killed my father. And tried to kidnap you. Yeah, Prince Lion, I know him. Oh yeah, we're at war. And that does it for that chapter. A short chapter, mostly exposition and dialogue. But, again, over the next couple chapters that's going to change as dialogue and cutscenes give way to just battles and fighting for survival. We're going to pick up a couple characters in the next couple of battles to round out the party, and then we're going to have our army proper, ready to, well, do some invading of our own. And that's going to do it for part two. I think this one's gone on long enough. Pretty much just planning to do a chapter per video. As you can see, the chapters are pretty much long enough to stretch into one video. Okay, so next time we'll just uh, head into chapter two get some more allies, I'll explain some more of the combat system since we'll be getting more classes, and talking about the strengths and weaknesses of those as well. Well, that'll do it. I will see you in the next video. Thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you in part three.